steady, girl. There. I guess that'll stay for a while, as long as we take it easy. How are you feeling, son? Fine, Daddy. Me and Mixie are having lots of fun. That's <laughs> a little man. <laughs> white man and he sure looks like he needs help. I'm responsible for a lot of lives. Where are you headed for? Well, me and my wife and small boy were heading to the gold fields. We left the wagon train looking for a shortcut. Them Indians surprised us. I headed looking for help. I didn't know just where I'd find it I ran into you. And I'm sure grateful to you. Yeah. Maybe you won't feel that way about it when you find out who we are. I'd be grateful to a band of cutthroats. Yeah. Well, I'm Teague. Teague the outlaw? Yeah. How do you feel about it now? I'd still feel the same way about it. Let's go and find out how your wife and kid is.
I sure do. Keep going. I'm going to take a look. I'll catch up with you. You come along with me. Where do you suppose he come from, Carson? <laughs> That's what I'd like to know. Come on, Sonny. Add a boy. What are you going to do with him? Uh, let him string along with us. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll run into his pawn ma. Here, Mitchie. Come here. Come on, Mitchie. There we are. Oh, well, well. Glad to have you with us, Sonny. <laughs> Get up. Well, you can see your wife and kids done for. Yes. Yes, and what's left for me? That's the toll of the desert. You'd better be coming with us. It'll help you to forget. This is no country for a man to be riding alone in. Yes. Sure. Where's that boy of yours, Carson? You mean my... my Bill? Yeah. Bill's been doing quite well of late. Acting as scout and trailblazer for these big herds of cattle coming up from Texas. Well, I'm glad. You know, he turned out right smart. Lucky, I say, Carson, picking up a wee if you didn't know who his father and mother were. You might have turned out a no good. I never had a doubt about that boy from the minute I laid eyes on him. He's ambitious. Spends most of his time reading law books. <laughs> well, he ain't around seeing my daughter, Jean. When he gets through with that herd, I'm going to have a badge waiting for him. The Yankton stage line is growing, but we're having losses right along. I have a proposition for you, Carson. I want that boy to ride as guard on the coach from Yankton to Pico Flats. Well, that's up to Bill. I'm making this proposition for two reasons. My daughter's kind of smitten with that young man. As long as I'm going to have him in the family, I'd like him to know something about the stagecoach business. Well, I'll tell you what you do. This is Bill's 21st birthday. Oh, we may be a few days off, but anyway, we always have a shindig at the house. You two gentlemen see Bill and put your proposition to him and see which one wins. Well, if there's a woman in it, that will settle it. He'll probably end up by owning the stagecoach line. <laughs> Here, 
Here's where I leave you, partner. I brought you within 10 miles of Yangtown. Just keep them headed due north. Thanks, Carson. You sure know the shortcuts in this country. I ought to. I was raised here. Well, here's where I get home without riding my horse. Why'd you make me run for it? Didn't you want to give a fellow a lift? Well, we're behind time now. Lost an hour to keep the flat, waiting for a shipment to dust in the mine. Out of the board? Yes, and that's strong, Doc. I'm sure glad to have company. How about your horse? Oh, he'll trail behind. Don't make any mistakes, boys. The way he talks, he thinks we'll make a mistake in every job we pull. What do you think? Ah, losing his nerve, I guess. Getting old is the only way I can <laughs> figure. what I was afraid of. They haven't got anything yet, have they? Bring them up there. Come on, get in there. Watch him, Tex. I seen a wildcat fight a coyote once, and you're the nearest thing to a wildcat I've seen since. <laughs> well, that's one coyote that won't hold up the stage again. <laughs> no. When they get through with him at Yanktown, he won't. <laughs> and get acquainted with the townspeople. Who is he and how did you get him? Why, they tried to hold us up. Bill happened to be riding here on the box and took a chance on getting plucked. This fella here stayed to fight. The rest of the gang took it on the run. I'll take care of you. See you later, Bill. Want to talk to you about being one of my deputies. All right, Sheriff. What's this I hear, Bill? Oh, nothing at all, Mr. Streeter. A gang tried to hold up the coach. One of the fellows happened to be a little too close to me, and I fell on him. You saved me about $10,000 by not letting those fellows get away with that strong box. Now, how about coming to work for me steady? You ought to be settling down, Bill. The stagecoach business has a better future than driving cattle up from Texas. 
And from what Jean tells me about the ideas you two have, it seems to me you ought to be getting closer to the family in a business way. Thanks for the offer, Mr. Streeter. But I think I ought to talk it over with Dad Carson. You know, he's been mighty fine to me all these years, ever since he found me out there on the desert. Even if he was my real father, I don't think he could have done more for me. I feel as though I owe him a great deal, and he's had a hankry for me to go back to school and finish my law course. Now, mind you, Mr. Streeter, Jean is a fine girl, and we plan on getting married soon. I won't say I can't be influenced. I'll think it over for a day or two and let you know. Coming to the party tonight? Yeah. I want to talk to you about a job I have to offer you, too. All right, then. See you tonight. Hey, Bill. Come on over to the office. I want to talk to you. All right, Sheriff. Thank you again for what you did for me, Bill. I want you to be one of my deputies. I was going to talk to you about it tonight, but I think I'd better put the proposition up to you right now, before Streeter gets to you and tries to convince you that you ought to be driving that Yanktown stage line for him. He's already tried that. I told him I'd think it over for a while. Oh. You see, Mr. Jackson, I've got a lot of plans, and once I make up my mind, I don't want to be changing it. Well, no matter what your plans are, your place is right here with me. Truth is, Mr. Jackson, I made a few dollars this last season. I've been thinking about going back to school. I'd like to finish my law course before settling down here. Gonna be another Abraham Lincoln, eh? Well, let me tell you something, young man. Your place is right here, now. We need your kind. This country is depending upon young fellows like yourself to help clean up this lawlessness and push the frontiers ahead. Certainly, I know all that. But somebody has to go to Washington and make the laws. That's what I'm planning to do. Aiming to study so that I can write laws that'll do away with all these lawbreakers. Yeah, but making laws right now isn't helping any. The only law they know is a six-shooter or a rope around their neck. Maybe you're right. I won't forget what you said. I'll give it some serious thought. All right, Bill, thanks. Nice little crowd you have there. Yeah. Right? How do the boys play? Well, boys play right smart. The old Joe Stryker over here. He yeah. never misses one of these parties, does he? Joe never misses the shindy. <laughs> hey, by the way, you'd be mighty proud of that boy of yours. He turned out to be everything that you'd like him to be. You're right, Jackson. There's only one thing that worries. Someday he may find his real father and leave him. Never found any trace of his father, eh? No, just as I told you. The locket was the only thing that he had. Nothing to tell who he was. Every year we celebrate the day I found him as his birthday. He's going to be mighty grateful to you, Carson. Congratulations, Bill, on your birthday. Thanks a lot, Mr. Jackson. Looking for Gene Streeter and her father? <laughs> they haven't shown up yet. <laughs> that kind of light. Yeah. Guess I'll take a look outside. <laughs> a good idea. <laughs> come on, Jackson, come over and have a smoke. Leave a will. Greetings, Bill. Happy birthday. Thanks, Mr. Streeter. And may I add mine to my father, Mr. Carson? Why the mister? Well, today's supposed to be your 21st, isn't it? So they say. I may be more than 21. Who knows? Who cares, my boy? Who cares?
I have something I want to ask you, Gene. Your father wants to give me a job, riding the stage for him. You will, won't you? I don't know. Sheriff Jackson offered me a badge serving under him. I've been doing right well blazing a trail for the cattlemen from down Texas way. Which do you really want to do, Bill? Well, I don't know. To tell you the truth, I hadn't even thought about it until your dad and the sheriff made the offers to me today. I'd planned on going back to school and becoming a lawyer. Then settling down here and marrying you, if you'll still have me. Practicing law will keep me here with you. But if I take either one of those other jobs, I won't be with you much of the time. You know, that Yanktown stagecoach doesn't stop here any too long. And between keeping it on schedule and fighting the Indians, I won't be seeing much of you. Here's Good evening, folks. Come in, Fred. Take yourself at home. Hey. Say. Where's Gene and Bill? We need them to make up this square dance. I left them outside. Yes? Well, I'll go get them. Bill. Gene. Yes? A shy one coupled with the square dance. Come on in. Hello, I found these. Just a minute. Everybody better be getting ready now. Well, that's good old fashioned square. Good old fashioned square. Hello, Ruth. Hello. Gene, will you sing for us? Oh, I'd rather not. You'll sing for me, won't you, Gene? Well, for you. Just you and me and me and you. Just you and I alone. A sky of blue, a nest for two. One we could call our own. You seem to play on my heart string. Refrain that seems to say there'll be some day just you and I What are here for, Collins? Must be quite a shindy going on here from the looks of the horse and the music inside. Well, there ain't nothing in there for us. I thought we were going down to Eldorado to do a little drinking. By going inside, we might take a little extra money with us to pay for our drinking. We'll look them over. Ah. Bill go for about three minutes, we'll get some fiddles in here. Well, I'll help you if you like. Come on. There's some more people arriving, just in time to eat. Come on in, gentlemen, the more the merrier. We don't need any invite. We're in. Stick them up, everybody, and shell out. Pick up the collection, Mike. Make it a good one, folks, and I won't be bothering you again. Well, Mr. Sheriff, so you're here. We were about to pay you a visit at the jail, 
One of my men happens to be there, I believe. Well, if he is, he'll stay there. You women get on the other side of the room. Maybe you didn't understand me. I said I wanted the keys to the jail. Give them to him, Jackson. They'd just as soon shoot us in cold blood as look at us. Come and get them. You know me the next time you see me. Button up your lip, young fellow. I'll talk if I feel like it. Well, if I feel like it, you won't talk at all. You can take anything I've got. You can take my watch if you want it, but leave me the locket. Oh, I'll leave you nothing. Put up that gun, Carter. We didn't come here for a killing. You've got a lot of nerve taking a chance on your life that way. I consider a man yellow who uses a gun to enforce his demands. What did he take of yours? Nothing but my watch and a little chain with a locket on it. You must like it pretty well to take a chance on your life that way. You wouldn't understand if I explained it to you. Give him back his watch and the rest, too. I know, but Give I got it back to him. Thanks. The first man to follow wished that he hadn't. Come on, Mike. Keep the people inside. He's done for, Bill. Mr. Streeter, you offered me a job today. Mr. Jackson, you offered me one too. Well, I've made up my mind which one I want. I'm going with you, Sheriff, so that I'll have the authority to go after the man that killed the best friend I ever had. Why well, to see you becoming a deputy under these conditions, Bill? And it hurts me to think that the things that I talked to you about this morning had to strike so close to home to convince you of our need of your kind. But the thing has happened, and the only thing we can do to help the situation is to bring him in. Bill, you're doing the only thing that's open to you. And if you didn't go with Jackson at this time, I'd lose my respect for you. But why? Why did they have to kill Dad Carson to make me see what you've been trying to tell me, Sheriff? Well, I guess it's too late to be going after him tonight. Sure would. We'll see the judge the first thing in the morning and be on our way. We've been on our way before now, Sheriff. Yeah, but we've waited this long. We might as well start this thing off right by having the law behind us. Well, let's start over now. The judge might be in by the time we get there. Well, all right. And on the way over, I'll pick up a few of the boys. I've been aching for years to bring that bunch in dead or alive. And right now, I just soon bring them in dead. Is the judge in? Yeah, in his room. He's upstairs in his office. He'll swear you in. And we'll start one of the biggest manhunts this section has ever known. Judge. Well, Sheriff, what's wrong? Plenty, Judge. Joe Carson was killed out of his ranch. We got a good look at him, too. It was Collins and his gang. But I need a few more deputies. Will you swear Bill and the rest of the boys in? Gladly. Hey, what's the idea of going to town now? This is our day to visit the bank, ain't it? We took them last month, didn't we? And we're going to take them again this month. Raise your right hands, gentlemen. 
Do you solemnly swear to uphold the law and use the power vested in you to the best of your ability? I, I do. do. Well, a little red eye won't do us any harm. A little. What we need is a lot. You get out of here, Collins. Sheriff's upstairs in the judge's room. I heard about you killing old man Carson. Yeah? And I'll get young Carson if he butts in. Set him up. Mm -hmm. Anything. We'll start from here. And by nightfall, I expect to have Collins and the rest of his gang where they belong. Come on, boys. Give us one more. Collins, we want you. Are you all right, Bill? I didn't get me with my horse they creased. Just grazed him, that's all. Uh, Lucky, I see. I was trying to figure where the hideout is. I was just wondering about that over there. Used to call that the old man of the mountain when I was a kid. I ain't saying they ain't over there. I don't know. Maybe you're right about that. There's plenty of places in there to hide. Yeah, but we haven't got enough men here. We'll have to go back to town and get every available man. And then come out here and try to shack them out of it. It's just the same to you, Sheriff. I'll take a shortcut and head for our ranch. Wonder if one of you boys mind changing horses with me. Got some tough going ahead, and I don't think mine will make it. Sure, Bill. Take mine. And if you're going to take this shortcut by yourself, you better keep one eye open. You don't want to run into anything. I'll keep both eyes open.
And be quick about it. Hey, Perez. Hello, what do you want? We've got a visitor. You better look him over. Take him back to the camp. I'm sure the old man will want to see him. He likes anything that's got a badge. Keep him covered to be right with you. Let me give you a tip, young fellow. Don't try anything with Perez. Where'd he go? That's what I'd like to know. Why that shot? I don't know. Why, it must have come from the past. There may have been others with him. I'll signal Collins to come and get him. That's the signal. There must be trouble down there. You and the boys better get going. back on the point. This Jasper may have some friends. We'll take him in. Get along, mister. How'd he get here? I don't know. From what I saw, it looks like he came down a rope from off the point. Well, come on inside, young fella. We'll see what's going to happen to you after we talk. The sheriff's men, huh? Yeah, for the time being. I'll say it's for the time being. And it's going to be short, too. Do you know what we do with your kind up here? The same that we do with your kind down below, I suppose. What's your name? Bill Carson. Well, Mr. Carson, would you like to send a message to your folks? I haven't any folks. 
You killed the only father I ever really knew when you shot Joe Carson. But you'll swing for it sooner or later. Maybe I will. But you won't live to see it. Search him. Come up, Bumby. Hey, one eye. Come here. He's a game one, that kid. The odds don't seem to mean a thing to him. But I'm a thinking, if he goes out, he'll know the way back. You get me? All right. You know what to do. Sure. I've seen you before. Yes, you have. Oh, yes. I remember you now. I'll say you've got grit. Get him a horse, put him aboard, and turn him loose. You going to turn him loose? Sure. By the time he gets out of here, we'll be gone. Thanks. I didn't think you had it in you. Move on. Get aboard and head for that rock. You can keep moving. All right. Slim picking. Two card wheels, knife, watch, and locket. A locket? Why, well, it was a locket the kids started to fight about the other night. My own son. And I sent him out to die. I wonder what's the matter with him. I wonder.
Wait a minute. I want to tell you something. Don't tell me anything, and keep your mouth shut. Because anything you say may be used against you. Just a minute now. I didn't have to come out here and save your life. There was something I wanted to find out. You said Joe Carson wasn't your father. I took a chance of a riding out here. Just because you reminded me of a boy I once knew. I thought by doing you a good turn, I might make amends for some of the mistakes I've made. You're lying. You came out here just to get some information you thought I might have. Well, the only thing that I know that'll do you any good is a rope around your neck. Whatever you're trying to say doesn't matter. You're yellow and a killer, and there's only one thing for you. You're taking me in? Yes, I'm taking you in. I'm giving you the benefit of a fair trial, which is more than you deserve. But I didn't know that you Come were... on, get moving before that gang of yours comes a-looking for you. I have heard the evidence in this case, and it is the verdict of the jury that you, Tom Collins, be hanged. What's the matter, Bill? Aren't you glad? I don't know. I've had a funny feeling all the time they were trying him. I know he's guilty, yet I... Oh, well. Just a minute. I'd like to talk to young Carson. Oh, all right. Oh, Bill. Come here a minute. Collins wants to talk to you. Don't take it so hard, boy. I'm guilty. Deserve all that's coming to me. And you'll never know how much more. It's, it's funny, though, that you, you of all people, should be the one to bring me to the end of my rope. Why me, of all people? Because you're what I once started out to be. Only I got my trails crossed. I took the trail that looked like an easy one. I was wrong. I see it now. If I'd have stayed as I started, things might have been different. And I might have had a son, just like you. I, I'm sorry about my killing Joe Carson. If I'd have known he was your father, I wouldn't have done it. He wasn't my father, but the nearest I'll ever have in this world, I guess. Well, that's, that's all I've got to say, except, uh, oh, Sheriff, can you do me a favor? Why, of course. Something in my pocket there for the boy. Would you give it to him? Is it? Yeah. Hi. Son. I feel as though I've found something and then lost it. Do you know what I mean, Jean? No, I don't. Let's go.